so much. Um, so on Palm Sunday, I think when we reflect on the idea of a radical on a donkey entering a place of power, I think that's something we can all get excited about as long as the donkey was treated well. Um, I think it's useful to think about the major problems uh, faced by 26,000 nuclear weapons which are held by powerful people in nine countries. The threat of several thousand of these weapons still on hair trigger, hair trigger alert, um, which means they're available for immediate uh, deployment by the US and Russia, really flies in the face of the idea we've been exploring of loving your neighbor. So nuclear weapons are, are still a major problem. Nuclear weapons make us vulnerable to terrorism, which everyone likes to talk about, in that fissile material left lying around can be used by anyone for any number of reasons. Um, and that, that is something we must take seriously. Nuclear weapons make us vulnerable to more nuclear weapons. Once someone's got them, everyone wants them. The threat of proliferation is a real one, and we're seeing the impact of that every day. And if people have nuclear weapons, there is a risk that they will be used. Intentionally or accidentally, the risk is there. And um, current estimates uh, suggest that there's a greater than 1% chance that we could have um, accidental or, in or intentional use of the nuclear weapons that exist in the next 10 years. I'm not very happy with that. I don't know how you feel. I think um, Jessica has been exploring a bit of the theme of what a huge obscene waste of money war is. And nuclear weapons really represent the pinnacle of the arrogance of the military industrial complex. If the US were to cancel their nuclear weapons program, there would be enough money to meet all of the Millennium Development Goals, all of them. The environmental impact of nuclear weapons, even if they're not deployed, is staggering. The sizes of the installations, the carbon cost of keeping these weapon systems running, of upgrading them, is catastrophic. And in Australia, even though we may not have nuclear weapons, we have to understand that we are part of the problem. We stand under the cold and much less friendly umbrella than this one of the nuclear weapons that the United States has. We have to take responsibility for that fact. And as we allow Pine Gap to be used by the US in their training and surveillance, we participate in their nuclear weapons program. This has to stop. Now there is hope. That is the good news. Weapons renewal programs around the world are being met with resistance. But perhaps the most striking example of this is Trident, which is the UK nuclear weapon system. And Scottish people are standing up saying, we are not having nuclear weapons on our soil. We are not having nuclear weapons in our water. The US and Russia have just announced that they will negotiate a new arms reduction treaty. We wish them Godspeed. And later today, in Hradchani Square, which is just in front of the castle in Prague, President Obama will lay out an agenda to seek a world without nuclear weapons, which I think we can agree is truly unprecedented. Nuclear weapons numbers are down from a horrifying 68,000 at the height of the Cold War to 26,000 presently. That is still 26,000 too many, but we're going in the right direction. Some countries have abandoned their nuclear weapons programs. We can hope that more would do so. And I think it's important to emphasize that none of these changes would have happened without massive public pressure. And that's where we come in. Now, I'm part of the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. And it's a new campaign aimed at really trying to bring together this groundswell of public opinion that nuclear weapons are horrible, wasteful, disgusting, immoral, and have to be gotten rid of. And I'm here because I'm a doctor. Now, what we know about nuclear weapons from what's happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as well as much closer to home with nuclear tests in Maralinga and so forth, is that nuclear weapons are really, really bad for your health. And although in a ma major disaster, doctors are often seen to be very helpful, I, I work at the Alfred Hospital. I've seen what happens when there are burns. The amount of burned people there would be after a nuclear explosion is so big that there wouldn't be a hospital able to deal with it. You add to that the impact of the loss of infrastructure, the loss of the hospital in which to treat patients, and we can't help you anymore. So as a doctor, I'm here to say that prevention is the only cure. We have to get rid of nuclear weapons.
So what we're trying to do is to partner with other key organizations, with unions, churches, environmental groups, and other existing peace and anti-nuclear groups, and we're pressuring governments for a new nuclear weapons convention. I myself and a number of other people from here in Victoria will be going to the Non-Proliferation Treaty PrepCom in New York next month, where we will be pushing governments to make ethical choices about what we do with resources and how we pull together to get rid of nuclear weapons. I would like to invite you to please join us and let your voice be heard so that we can have some peace this Palm Sunday. Thank you very much.